Hello, and welcome back to my reading of my book, Breadman. If you're just now tuning in, I've already read chapters 1 and 2 on my channel before, so you can check out those right now. And to give you a recap of what happened in those chapters, it was about a mad scientist that created a mysterious serum that does something special to the human body. And that was his task to create it and to send it into the committee at his work, which he did. And then he brought a sample back home and accidentally fed it to his two-year-old son. However, the committee also tested the serum and said that it doesn't work at all, which means that his two-year-old was actually safe after all. Or was he? Which brings us to chapter three. Strap in, boys and girls, because this is going to be interesting. Also, I'm going to pause at a couple points in this chapter because I feel the need to comment on some things that I wrote. Let's get cracking. Chapter 3, The Larson Residence, 1998. David Larson has just turned 10 and felt better than ever. With the help of his loving parents, last weekend was the best birthday party he had ever had. He had all of his friends come over and they all gave him wonderful gifts. They played games and talked for hours before they had to leave. One friend stayed the night, his best friend, Andy Campbell. Andy and David had been friends for nearly four years now. They met in first grade and became fast friends. David was in his room watching his TV. He was in the middle of his favorite show at the time, Early Edition. It was about a man who wakes up every day to get the next day's newspaper and nobody knows how he gets it, but he has the rest of the day to set things right. David laughed at the sight of Gary Hobson sticking the entire newspaper into his back pocket. First side note early edition is indeed one of my favorite shows as a child i wrote it in there because for whatever reason i had it on my mind it's just a lot of random detail about a show that i watched as a kid for no apparent reason other than i wanted to write about it apologies let's continue just then his mother called from downstairs david it's time for dinner okay mom david leaned over to his television and turned the top knob off yes knob he got up and ran out of his room before walking down the steps, David leaned over the rail and slid down. Beth stomped towards David and said, David, what did I tell you about sliding down the rail? You could fall and hurt yourself. Tom just laughed quietly to himself. He remembered when he slid down the stairwell and was beaten with his father's belt. Ooh, his son had it easy. Now go and eat your dinner. David ran into the kitchen and sat down. Once Beth sat down, everybody dove into the food. They all seemed to have the best manners. They each ate with their mouths closed. They cleanly wiped themselves with napkins. Everything was fine. Tom finished a bite and looked to David. So, little man, how was school today? Stupid. My teachers hate me. Why do you say that? Because they won't let me have any fun. Well, that's just because they try so hard to keep you focused. Yeah, whatever. David reached over and grabbed a dinner roll off the middle of the table. After being in a foul mood about his school, David ate a chunk of the roll. What happened next, no one could explain. All of his foul feelings left him. All that was on his mind now was this delicious roll. He stuffed the rest of the roll into his mouth, forgetting about his neat manners. He never really liked rolls before, but something happened when he turned 10. Something physical inside his body. He forcefully grabbed another roll and put the entire thing in his mouth. After he quickly swallowed that roll, he grabbed another and another. Beth grabbed his hands. David, mind your manners. She let go of his hands, and once again he forced it into his mouth. Every sensation in his body was getting filled, and he couldn't understand why. Every bite of the bread wasn't enough. Each time that he ate, he needed more. His hands grabbed for another piece, but he realized he'd eaten them all. Out of the blue, a rush of pain went straight to his eyes, and he clutched them. David, son, are you all right? His father asked with sympathy. David stumbled out of his chair and tried to walk, but he, all he ended up doing was flailing around until he dropped to his knees. That was when he opened his eyes. Fire blasted out of his eyes for three minutes. Three minutes? That's a long time. David was screaming. Finally, the fire died out. David passed out and dropped onto the carpet. Beth and Tom were just staring in disbelief. Finally, they came to their senses. Beth scooped David up in her arms and left the building. Tom grabbed the fire extinguisher and put the small fire out. It does say small even though the fire was blasting from his eyes for three minutes. I mean, I don't think it would be small. I think a fire extinguisher wouldn't do the trick. But I digress. One week earlier. David blew out his candles. All ten flames were blown out with a single blow. After David opened his gifts, 
Tom sent everybody home and gave them each a surprise gift bag when they left. Late that night, Beth tucked David and his friend into bed, and she asked him, So, what did you ask for? Tom was in the doorway, drinking a glass of root beer. Yes, very distinguished. He was listening to his wife and son's conversation. Oh, I wish to be a super soldier. You know, like those guys on TV. This made Tom remember about the incident when David was younger, when he drank the substance. You know, like last chapter. One year after he sent the serum into the committee, the committee destroyed the bread compound in the serum and put a new compound in altogether. They did this until the serum worked successfully for their lab rat, Squeaky. They converted the solid into a liquid and injected the rat with it. The test was successful. The rat ran right into his cage and the cage broke and the rat escaped. It wasn't long after this experiment that they began work on humans, and it wasn't long after the human tests that they began to show the public their new army of super soldiers. Not even a week passed before everyone in the world knew about these soldiers. Nearly everyone wanted to be a super soldier. Alright, another comment here. When I wrote this book, I thought I was clever, and I thought I coined the term super soldiers. I did not, but I thought I did, so when I saw a movie shortly after writing this book where they used the word super soldiers, I thought they stole it from me. I think the movie that I saw them use that term was in Ultraviolet. I was like, holy crap, they're using my word! And, and my brother looks up to me and he's like, no, man, super soldiers a, a thing, it's been around forever, You're, you just... Just broke my spirit. <laughs> Back to modern day. Tom put the extinguisher back in its place. He sat down. This means that the serum really did work all those years ago. The only difference was he had to eat bread for anything to happen. Nothing happened when he ate bread before. It must have been a maturing thing. Later that night, after Beth came into bed with Tom, neither of them talked since dinner. Beth spoke first. You want to tell me what just happened? What do you mean? Can you tell me why our 10-year-old son just had fire blast from his eyes? Tom knew very well why. He figured it out earlier in the day. He told his wife what he did all those years ago and why it's only showing up today. You mean he used our son as a lab rat? No, no, no. It was an accident. David pulled the serum away from me and drank it whole. There was nothing that I could do about it. Why couldn't you tell me this when it happened? Because I knew you would freak out and have him checked into a hospital. They both agreed to sustain feeding David bread until Tom could find something to put into bread that would not give David any reactions. Several hours later, when everybody was asleep, David crept out of his bedroom and grabbed a slice of bread and went back to his bed. He ate a corner of the bread and tried to make the fire come out again. Nothing happened. Then he did what he wanted to do. He stuffed the entire piece into his mouth and tried again. Again, nothing happened. David got angry. He picked up a stuffed bear close by and threw it at the window. The window shattered when the fluffy animal made contact. Beth and Tom ran in and asked what happened. When Tom walked over to the broken window, he could see a small white bear over a hundred feet away. A stuffed bear broke the window? Beth asked later back in bed. Yeah, and get this. When I went to the kitchen, the bag of bread was open. This is when they both recognized that different forms of bread make David have different abilities. They were both scared of the limit of David's power. He had gotten what he wished for. He was a super soldier. That's it, chapter three. So now we're definitely getting into inside joke territory with this book. There's a lot of inside jokes in here and I'll try as hard as I can to explain them when they show up. This was never really marketed for a wide audience to hear. It was only really meant to be read by my family who understand the inside jokes. So when I run into them, I'll try to explain them. But as it is, chapter 3 is done. Let me know in the comments down below what you thought of it. And if you want to hear chapter 4. And until next time, peace out.